Good morning. Hi. Being that this is your last day of doing these things in Pro Start, guys, each got each team's got to come up with one dish. These are your ingredients. These are ciabattas, ciabatta roll. We have scallions. My name is Dan Jacobs. I'm the chef owner of Dan Dan Restaurant and Estorev. Uh, I'm also one of the chef mentors for the Pro Start program at Washington High School. Pro Start is a high school program. It basically gives them the basic skills to be able to work in a restaurant or in a restaurant environment. More so, it just gives them the basic life skills to cook food at home. Um, we have arugula. So we have pork chops for you guys to use. That's gonna be your protein. There's so many different things you could do, but you guys have to talk as a team together and come up with an idea. How much time do we have to do a dish? One hour. You guys have one hour. You guys have tons of time. There you go, team one, team two. Have fun, guys. My moment, this is where I get to say, hey, this is all where it comes together. This is where they show me that they've learned something in these two years. I, this is, I love it. Uh, working with the chef mentors in this last year, they, these students have really taken what they've learned with me the first year and just honed on those skills with the chef mentors and just taken it to a whole nother level. It's been wonderful. Jennifer Bartolotta approached me last year about this idea of ProStart. We all kind of are finding a shortage of people working in restaurants right now. Everybody wants to hire, but there's nobody to hire. That was my main point for getting involved. Our goal is to take juniors and seniors in high school and give them the same luxury of hope that the rest of us enjoy. I'm Jennifer Bartolotta. I am in charge of special projects with the Bartolotta restaurants. And for the last 18 months, I've been a loaned exec to MPS in helping them envision and develop and launch a hospitality workforce development program by showing them and exposing them not just to the world that is food, but the, the endless possibilities in terms of employment that are in that arena. I like it. I like, it. I like the grilled stuff especially. I really, I like grilled asparagus. Today we're making some food to be served at the farm tour. We got a couple different cuts here. We got chuck, we have some uh, arm roast. Um, these are all from Janet at Turtle Creek. And then some of these are from Todd and the gang over at Strauss. Look at that, gorgeous. So we're gonna treat these guys like briskets. Smoke them low and slow. Finish them off in barbecue sauce. Kind of treat them like pulled pork almost. This is for Washington High School students. A little picnic over at uh, Turtle Creek Farm. Uh, it's all part of the pro start uh, classes that we started in the fall. And this is kind of like the culmination of the school year right here. It'll be some of these kids' first experience on a farm. Um, and I think it's going to be really eye-opening. Super fun to watch their reactions to stuff like how vegetables are grown or even like cows and pigs, how they're raised. Um, smells. We're ready to go to the farm. are headed to Turtle Creek Farm. They'll be talking to you about the different produce and things that they do at the farm so that you guys can kind of come up with some ideas about what you're going to be doing on Monday for your challenge against each other. Check them in. Shanice, check your phone in. Starting out, many students don't, they think that they're, they're like, oh, are we gonna be cooking out of a box? And well, what are we gonna be doing? And then I, I show them that we're gonna be cooking things from scratch and the importance of fresh ingredients. And they're going home and they're sharing that experience with their little brothers and sisters, their parents. And they're gonna actually use some of the produce from this farm and they're gonna actually take that and transform it into a dish. We call it the chop challenge. Hi. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice I'm, to meet you. I'm Janet. Hi, Janet. I'm Sabrina. Hi, Sabrina. What's up, guys? Hi. Janet actually grows a bunch of vegetables for us at the, at, um, the restaurant. Janet's one of the farmers that we buy directly from. You're 100% organic, right? Yes. So we're a certified organic farm. It's a label that means that we don't use any synthetic chemicals on our field. So you're not going to get any pesticide residue or chemical residue in the food. 
you know, the food that you're going to be making today is all coming primarily from the farm. You know, the, the meat that you'll be using today are from cattle that were raised on this land. So you'll make that connectivity between what you're going to be working with and how we're growing it on this farm. Here we go. Turtle Creek Gardens is an 80-acre farm, and we specialize in vegetable production and rotational grazing, so grass-fed beef and pasture-raised hogs. And I think the farm plays like this really important role in providing a living classroom. You can learn about all sorts of aspects of life just coming and visiting a farm. You know, from your health perspective to the environmental and how humans are interconnected to that. Bringing people out for the first time, especially inner city children, it's so new and it's just this new world that opens up and I love experiencing that. I love seeing them experiencing that. I got Pat walking. No, Dan, no, you want to help with the gate? Well, you might get. Cow. Oh, no. Does anybody want cow poo on their feet? No. Really? No volunteers? What do you think of the smell? It's not too bad. Mm -hmm. it's, not that bad. it's funny, huh? I used to live in the city and I drove past a dairy barn every day to school. I like this all the time. <laughs> now it's on my feet, it's in my clothes, it's under my fingernails. It's wonderful. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know about under fingernails, but yeah. We got 30 acres back behind this fence over here. We grass feed these animals on a rotational system. And it, the whole idea is I don't really worry about raising cattle as much as I worry about raising good pasture. The progress that the kids have made over the course of last year has really been nothing short of extraordinary. We have demonstrated that you can take kids who, despite some really challenging circumstances at home, and, and have somebody from the community come in and really help also support these kids and be yet another bridge for them to help lift them out of situations that are pretty, pretty desperate. These guys are so much cleaner than you would see like a normal, like in, in, in your like mass-produced production like cattle farm. Like this is the way a cow was, a cows were made to eat grass. They weren't made to eat corn or grain or anything like that. This is like how, this is about as natural as it gets for them. Beets, lettuce, chard, romaine, more spinach, more lettuce. It'll be, this stuff will be ready to harvest in about a week. In case you haven't seen lettuce in the field or peas or spinach or beets or chard. It's kind of pretty, huh? How many of you guys would actually want to be farmers? I don't know if I can do it, but I like animals. I pick the horses. It's a tough life. I mean, this is this is tough. I always thought it would be kind of fun. I don't think I could do this. I like city. Yeah. Right. I'm more of an animal. City person. So these are my favorite. I love the pigs. You guys, what are you guys afraid of the pigs? Oh, man, they smell fine. This is how your bacon and pork chops begin. Oh, they come out because they think it's food time. <laughs> it smells great. Come on. The it cattle, smells great. The cattle smell better. These guys smell great. This is great. So when I was a kid, when I was little, uh, my aunt had a, had a horse farm and they raised pigs too. And she would tell us that if we fell asleep or got knocked over and got knocked unconscious, uh, the pigs would eat us. Really? So I was scared. I was scared to death of pigs. <laughs> for like most of my most of my childhood. Now, I mean, these guys are so happy. They're so, good look pigs. Look how happy they are. They're good pigs. Yeah, man. Uh, if you don't uh, mind uh, getting the poop on you, uh, go uh, ahead. Uh, watch that bottom, watch that bottom line. I'll tell you what we can do here. Don't touch the wire. Can you step over there or not? I can't. Ah! Oh, 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 <laughs> Did you get that? It, it's hot. Oh, I told you it was hot. I told you it was hot. <laughs> There you go. Just stay on the hay. Stay on the hay pretty much. And you'll be okay. It's a little soft in here. Wanna meet my new friend here? Wanna meet my new friend? This is Kyle. 
So come say hi. You're gonna get me all rigging muddy. I've had Herefords a lot. I get a lot of compliments on the Hereford. How how come your pigs taste so good? We raise them with love. Yeah. Right. We raise them with love. We feed them all the vegetables they can possibly eat, and uh, they get a lot of attention. A friend of mine over at Lot Follow Farm, Tim, calls his Pig TV. Just come and watch the pigs, you know. These guys are very happy as they're, far as pigs go. These are very happy pigs. They're a happy, content pig. Once you guys have washed your hands, you want to jump on the other side of me? I'm going to wash my hands and then we're going to mix up some coleslaw. All right, let's scoop some cabbage into the bowl. You don't need to scoop all of the cabbage into the bowl, but I think you should scoop some. With your hands! What are you, you just got your hands clean. Now you want to scoop some carrots in there. The way I look at coleslaw, I like half the amount of carrots to what I have of cabbage. Now, dig that whole thing, because we like chives. Chives are delicious. You guys want to dump all the radishes? You want to? That's it? Yeah. Wait, you don't know what a radish is? Taste it. Yes, you guys. Now, now we're gonna. Now, we're, now you guys all got to eat a radish. Everybody taste it. That's a miracle. Corey said it was good. When the kids came into the program, we had kids um, who legitimately didn't know what carrots were. Um, I'll never forget the very first day of the program, two girls leaned over the counter and they said, I know what the onion and the celery are, but what's the orange thing? And it was a carrot. I had two groups of girls who had never seen an oven work before. And the first time we baked cookies, for 12 minutes they stood in the oven window like this and watched their cookies bake. That's magic, right? They didn't grow up with easy bake ovens. We have buns, you guys can make little sandwiches. I highly recommend putting the coleslaw on the sandwich. And remember guys, at least try everything, okay? What did you guys think of today? I mean like the- It was good. Yeah. Are you thinking about going to MATC too? Yeah, I got something. Nice. Congrats. So these kids are gonna be job ready or college ready no matter where they end up once they leave MPS and they leave our program. What we're really doing is we're leveraging the discipline that's hospitality to teach these kids how to have a job. If 10% of those kids end up in our world is skilled labor, that's awesome. And so if, if nothing else, what we've done is we've shown them that there's this whole big world out there of possibility that they're gonna have to work hard for, nobody's gonna give it to them, but there's possibility for them. There's hope for them. And I think when they have the opportunity to work with some of this stuff next week in the classroom, it will bring them full circle and they will understand the, the value and the joy that you get from that. And, and it is a joyful thing. It's good. It is good. I like the brown stuff. What's this brown stuff? <laughs> Okay, that's your star time, but you're going to be ready to judge and ready to go at 11.30. So one person shouldn't be the only person chopping up. Okay. You guys, I'm we sure you have your phones on you. Look up some recipes. Let's get something going. Oh, we can use our phones? I have to admit, I'm going to throw it out there. Pinterest is kind of like, I'm a visual guy. I like to see, I like to go by pictures. If I'm stuck on something, that's where I come up with an idea. Oh, we found one, y'all. That's one garlic pasta. In the beginning, like, you have all these, like, grandiose ideas that you're going to be like Robin Williams and Ted Poet Society or something. You very quickly realize that these are, these are high school kids, and I think then you have to go back into your memory of what you were like as a high school kid. You know, I wasn't, wasn't the best student. You know, I almost dropped out of school. I almost got, just went for a GED. Pull those guys. We got it ready to go. Cooking, I think, gave me the structure and, you know, made me the adult I am. I do think food has that ability. You know, I'm really passionate about food and, you know, these guys, food is just something they eat. Some of them, you know, move towards enjoying cooking. I think for a lot of them it was like, ew, I'm not trying that, ew, and then forcing them to try things and then them being like, okay. What's up, girl master? I never really tried asparagus. This is actually my first time cooking it. I really want to know what it's going to turn out to be. I like what we're doing here. Just make sure to give them, let, it, let them sit, let them get a nice color. Yeah. And then and then start moving, especially with the pork chops. What'd you guys put on the pork chops? Did you guys use the lemon that, that, we, that was in the basket? Nice. 
many of our students don't they don't have that um, component of grandma anymore in the home they're not, they're not seeing that where they're getting fresh produce and seeing the the, the idea of cooking things from scratch many students they're, they're not having a home cooked meal at home they don't have that uh, mom at home mom is forced to actually have to work and so they're they're having to take care of little brother little sister but they don't have that component of having to prepare a meal <laughs> yep. He's seasoning. Know that you have to have four servings. The timer is set for 20 minutes. When it goes off, you have 10 minutes left to plate. All right, that's where you should start plating. Oh, Chef Dan. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that looks fabulous. The lemon, okay. I am Darian Driver. I'm the proud superintendent of Milwaukee Public Schools. I've been in this position for almost three years now. Uh, very proud uh, to say that I, uh, some of my first jobs were in restaurants. Uh, having my students have this opportunity uh, is really uh, important to me. Uh, these are the types of skills that you will have for a lifetime. And I think all the time about the skills that I had um, when I was uh, working and serving tables, and I use them today still. So this is a pecan crust and pork Yep. Ah, baby, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, really, really good. Wonderful. So, what's the best part about making all these dish these dishes? It's basically just something that we made all together throughout the year, and we just incorporated it into one dish. The funnest part about it is working together. Yeah. So the culinary arts program has been in full swing now in MPS for a year. Uh, we are now in four different high schools at Bayview, uh, James Madison, at Vincent High School, and where we are today at Washington High School. Uh, really, this is the opportunity for over 300 students to be able to participate in a lab setting. So they're actually in the kitchens, and it gives our students a real-time application uh, in the labs, uh, learning what it means to run a, a full-time kitchen. Hey, guys, let's go. Um, we have um, a pork, a grilled pork, pork chop, chop, romaine cheese pasta with sauté, grilled and sautés are asparagus. So we have a pan seared pork chop with a candy pecan coating and we have a arugula pesto pasta with grilled asparagus and a black pepper parmesan pasta. These look great guys. I feel like the pecan surprise. I did not understand what you guys were doing. I thought you guys were making cookies. It's really good with the pesto. It's like sweet, and then you have like that garlic savoriness. Mm -hmm. Both pork chops are really good. I really like the uh, asparagus on the this one with the, the nuts. It's got, um, it's nice and green still and flavorful, and it's got a nice little snap to it, but it's not raw. Really nice job on that. Okay. Thank you so much. Nice grilling. Well done, ladies. Thank you. It's gonna be really hard, guys. You guys made this hard, good job. These are restaurant quality meals, the seasoning, the grill on this pork chop is perfect. Both are a professional presentation. I would be delighted to pay 18, 20, whatever for these types of entrees. The asparagus, I felt both of them were um, very well done, not overcooked, um, but still um, definitely uh, flavorful. I do think overall, um, Gosh, <laughs> this was probably the, the better dish, but it was very close for me. The pesto here is fantastic. Like that, that tastes exactly like how a pesto is supposed to taste. Uh, I don't think I could be happier. Um, I mean, they, like from where we started to where we are now, the fact that they got minimal direction, they came up with these things on their own. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing to me. Like, I think everything about this dish, I like. This, however, take this to another level. Like this is stuff that like we do professionally. Like we'll do different textures, yeah. we'll do different flavors to build to build a dish. I feel like a proud parent sitting here. You know, when you talk about your dreams for your kids, these are the types of experiences that you really want them to have. So, uh, just really. Um, very blessed that we have such awesome mentors that work with our kids. I, I can't wait till next year to see what happens next year. So, no problem. Oh yeah! By the way, guys, losing teams, losing team has to clean all the plates. And the winner is Team Two. Absolutely.